This unusual model comes in a plain box with salmons on the front, and it looks like inside there is nothing, just a plain piece of foam. But if we take that up, it's still nothing, just a plain piece of foam. But we're not going to be put off by that, because if we lift out the pre-cut shapes, then the various parts of the model are seen all carefully packed. There are no instructions for it though, which is a pity, and on the review model there was one defect. One of the tie bars didn't have any holes drilled in the end. This model is of a very unusual heavy lifting frame, and we start the assembly by building up the tracks that it runs on. There are six track sections, three for each side, and they're joined up by inserting a couple of steel pins. They are quite small, so it can be a little bit fiddly to get them in, particularly if you've got large fingers. Anyway, once they're joined up, the track sections are reasonably straight. Here we've put one of the four units onto the track, and we're going to extend up the lifting rams. They are multi-stage and they're locked in place by small grub screws, and you use the supplied allen key to unlock and lock them. At first there seemed to be a problem on the review model in that some of the screws were too tight and couldn't be released, but in fact they were all released by putting some lateral pressure on the allen key as you turn it. That seemed to make the key grip the screw better, and that meant it could be unscrewed. We will now move on having set the height of the rams to be the same on each of the units. Two units go on each track, and to make them have the same distance apart, there's a tie bar, and that drops into place over connecting points on each of the units. If you then want to secure the tie bar, you can insert a steel pin at each end. And here I've grown extra long metal fingernails to help get the pin in. But even so, there's no substitute for flesh and bone, and it's back to them to push the pin home, and to make sure the unit is properly sitting on the track. Lastly, we add on the lifting beams, and before we do that, we add on a couple of runners to each one. These just slide along the beam, and they are the main lifting points. The beam goes on the top of the rams, and it just sits there, it's not clipped on. So it's best not to knock it, or the whole thing will collapse in a heap. Now we'll look at the detail on the various parts, and the tracks have a nice metal structure. There are nice rubber hydraulic hoses, but they are delicate, so they'll easily dislodge if you knock them. But on the plus side, among the nice touches are the small graphics and the painted control consoles. At the top of the units, there are fin railings and replica lifting points. And the pistons are smooth, with hydraulic hoses running to each collar. The lifting points and the beam are simple enough, and there are sharp graphics. One possibility for the model is to use it as a transport load, and of course it would look even better with some trucks in Saren's colours. But let's assume it's all been delivered to the worksite, and let's see how one of the units works. Well, underneath there are tiny little metal rollers which turn, and it's these which roll when you put the unit on the track. On the model this all works quite nicely, with the unit rolling along pleasantly. The way it actually moves itself is to use the hydraulic ram on the side, the end of it grabs hold of the centre rail, and then the hydraulic ram is used to move the unit along. By repeating this, the lifting frame is able to move itself in a series of steps. Anyway, this is a lifting frame, so let it lift, let it lift, let it lift. To do that, you need some straps which aren't supplied with the model, which is a pity. But these ones have just been made out of packing straps, and the loops at the end are secured together with some offcuts of a paper clip. Yes, there's never any expense spared at cranes, etc. So here we have the straps attached, one on each lifting point, and supplied with the model are some strap guides, which are to be placed under the thing to be lifted. And these are nicely made metal parts, and they're quite heavy. So now we need something to lift, and let's see what we can find. The real lifting frame is rated at 720 tonnes, so this Tadano G6 crane is an easy lift, because it only weighs around 72 tonnes. To lift it up, we're feeding the straps over the partially extended outrigger beams. And here you do have to be quite careful how you apply the load, because if you get it unbalanced or apply any lateral load at all, it would all collapse in an impressive mess. But with it all set up correctly, it does support the weight of the crane. And just to prove it, we'll move the crane about a little bit, to see that it is hanging free. And actually, when it's set up like this, the lifting frame does look very impressive. <laughs> the 
This is an interesting and unusual model from YCC, and this limited edition certainly does look good in the colours of Sowans. It's a delicate model with some very nice detailing, and once you work through the issues of setting it up, then you get something which is actually quite large. It's a nice looking model and is highly recommended.